I'm M. Jairan, currently professor and head of the Department of Speech Pathology and Audiology, and also the Dean of the Faculty of Allied Health and Basic Sciences at Sri Devarajara's Academy of Higher Education and Research, Kola. It's a deemed to be university and is in existence since 1994. Let me start off by congratulating uh, Nandu Radhakrishnan for the excellent initiative he has taken. Thanks to his initiative, information would now be available on the origin and development of the field of speech and hearing in India and people responsible for that in one place. Congratulations, Nando. Keep up the good initiative. I was born in a remote backward village called Hullahalli in the district of Mysore in the year 1952. My early childhood was characterized by a series of illnesses which prevented me from going to school till 1959. In the year 1959, I was straight away admitted to third standard in the government new type primary and middle school. The village might have been backward, but the school itself was very good and the teachers were excellent. I respectfully remember Sri Madhushakti, my first teacher, and Sri Kempashakti, who taught me science starting from fifth standard onwards. Sri Kempashakti made us understand what is scientific temper, scientific evidence, and experiment. My elder sister was also there in the same class as I, and uh, we were always waiting for the top honors in the class till seventh standard. Otherwise, my stay at the village school was unremarkable. I did well in the seventh standard examination and then went to Udipi for further studies. Udipi is a temple town, abode of Lord Sri Krishna. It's very famous for its uh, Krishna temple and the Astamathas. In 1964, I got admission at government board high school. The high school was very good and the teachers were really excellent. I respectfully remember Sri Chandrasekhar Swamiaji who taught me Sanskrit, Sri Badrina who taught me chemistry, which was my favorite subject. Sri Nagapaya, who taught me both general science and social studies. And to top them all, Sri Jain Shetty, who taught me English. Sri Jain Shetty literally made us to drink Ren and Martin, the classical English grammar treatise. My stay and education at board uh, high school really broadened my thinking, broadened my outlook of life in general. I did very well in the SSLC examination, got 70% and therefore it was not at all difficult for me to secure admission for PUC at MGM College Manipal, which was a famous school there. Those days, pre university was being mediated by the respective universities and MGM College was affiliated to University of Mysore. It was teaching in English medium at uh, pre-university college and uh, it was very difficult for us you know, who came from English medium uh, uh, teaching. But I should remember the contribution made by all my teachers uh, for me to understand the subjects and uh, progress. Especially, I should remember Captain Balakrishnan who was on deputation from Indian Army to this college to take up a teaching position, who taught us biology, which was my favorite subject then, other than chemistry. Srimati Teresa Joseph, who taught us English, had a deep influence on me. I did very well in the pre-university examinations, got 69% with very good marks in chemistry and biology. I returned to Mysore in 1969 for further study. Mm -hmm. 
I had done well in the pre-university examination, particularly in uh, chemistry and biology. I wanted to be a doctor. My family also wanted me to be a doctor. Therefore, I sought admission in one of the government medical colleges. There were just 150 seats in the government medical colleges those days, 50 each in the medical college at Mysore, Bangalore and Dharma. In the meanwhile, I had secured admission for a Bachelor in Veterinary Science program at Bangalore, Bachelor in Fisheries Science program at Magalore, and a Bachelor in Science program at Yuvarajas College, Mysore. Going to Bangalore or Mangalore for higher studies was just not in the scheme of things for my family. Therefore, I took admission at Yuvarajas College and was waiting for classes to begin. On 3rd July 1969, my uncle, who was an office superintendent at the University of Mysore, came home and told my brother about the new BSc Speech and Hearing program and the All India Institute of Speech and Hearing. He stressed the fact that it's a new course and a new institute, which meant that the job potentials are very high. For most of us those days, completing our education and securing a government uh, job was an undeclared motto. The only problem was that the last day for uh, applying for BSc Speech and Hearing program was 30th June and it was over. Nevertheless, my brother went to the institute the next day, met Dr. J.J. Dharmaraj, the then director of the institute. Dr. Dharmaraj saw my mask card and allowed me to apply. I applied for the program, got selected, and joined the institute on 1st August 1969. Mine was the third batch of BSc Speech and Hearing and the institute was located at Maharaja's College Centenary Hall those days. Let me finish my medical uh, admission story. There was no entrance examination those days. I was asked to appear for a personal interview at Mysore Medical College. There at the interview, the chairman of the selection committee wanted to a silly mistake I had committed in the application form and without giving me any chance, asked me to leave the interview. My medical dreams were shattered once for all. By his decision, the chairman of the selection committee completely changed my life. It was very disappointing, but let me come back to the speech and hearing program. We were 15 in the third batch to begin with. I had uh, Satyendra Kumar from Delhi, Subhash Agarwal from Ambala, Vijay Nandu from Hyderabad, Manoharan from Tamil Nadu, and from Karnataka there were uh, Malikarjun, Shanwas, Adiyasan Prasad, Guru Prasad, Prakash, Nagesh, Jayanti Mala, Vijayabhatmi, Ratna, and Sheila with me in the third batch. The teaching was in English medium. Getting adjusted to students from different uh, parts of the country, speaking different languages, coming from different backgrounds uh, was a problem uh, in the early days. Language and communication in English were always problematic. In addition, I had the disappointment of unfair rejection of a medical seat for me. Because of all these things, I could not concentrate on my speech and hearing studies. I was more interested in organizing sports events in ball badminton, carom, chess, and uh, carom. The exams came, there were class examinations, and I didn't do all that well. I got eighth rank among 13 students. After the first year examination, we were eagerly looking forward for our second year BSc program. That was in June uh, 1970 when four uh, 
or even five significant things happened. One was my classmate Subhash, who had gone home for his vacation after the first year exam, never returned. He succumbed to malaria, we were told. So the remaining 12 of us continued the program. Second event was the shifting of our institute from the Maharaja's College Centenary Hall to our own building at Mansabhan Motri. Third event was my election as sports secretary uh, to the Students Association. I continued uh, my sports activities with greater vigor and enthusiasm. All these years, MSc students were getting stipend, but the BSc students were not getting. In 1970, June, July, a stipend of rupees 100 per month was introduced for the first time for students of the coming batch of BSc. So my friend Rangasai and his classmates were the first one to get stipend at the institute for their BSc program. The last and the most significant event was the induction of four of our seniors as lecturers. We had Mr. P.D. Marohar, Mr. M. N. Vasmurthy, Mr. S. P. Pandale, and Ms. Shamla Dhanbaraj as new lecturers at the institute who changed it, who changed completely the teaching environment at the institute. In the second year BSc, we had speech pathology and audiology as class subjects. There were no university examinations in that. We had university examinations only in uh, developmental psychology, clinical psychology, and statistics. Mr. Manohar taught us speech pathology, Mr. Vasmurthy taught us audiology. From that time till the time I completed my MSc, it was Dr. Vasmurthy and Dr. Vasmurthy alone who taught me audiology. He was a great teacher in the classical mode. Even today, I remember all the audiology that he taught in those four years. Thank you very much, sir. So we had university examinations in uh, developmental psychology and psychology of learning taught by Mr. Uh, M. N. Hegde, clinical psychology and mental testing taught by Mr. J. Bharatraj, and statistics again taught by Mr. Bharatraj. I did extremely well in the final university examinations, got 73% and first rank. For that scheme of examination and curriculum, that record is yet to be broken at the institute. So we went to third BSc in uh, June 1971. And uh, personally, a satisfying thing for me was that I got elected as General Secretary of the uh, Students Association and uh, I, I continued to organize various events. We had uh, four papers in speech language pathology and four papers in uh, audiology. Uh, the speech pathology and audiology papers, majority of them were taught by Mr. Manohar and uh, Mr. Vasmurthy. Dr. Atna was teaching us the education of the orderly handicapped. The four papers in speech pathology were Introduction to Speech Pathology and Voice and Articulation, Speech Therapeutics and Organization of Speech and Hearing Centers, Stuttering and uh, Other Organic Anomalies, and uh, Clinical Sin Speech Language Pathology. Four papers in audiology were hearing aids, speech reading, and auditory training. Second one was education of the orally handicapped. Third paper was introduction to audiology. Fourth paper was clinicals in audiology. Again, I did very well in the university examinations. Stood second, my classmate uh, Sheila uh, secured the first rank in the uh, final BSc examination. <clears throat> so in 
So we were ready for uh, admission to MSc and pursue our uh, program. We were ready for admission to MSc program in July 1972, but let me mention about one thing that I missed about the BSc program. When I passed the second year university examination, one of my seniors, Mahananda, he passed his first MSc university examination and like me, he stood first in the class. He cleverly instituted two gold medals by name Nanda Gold Medal for the university toppers in BSA and MSc. It was not necessarily for rank holders in the final year of uh, BSc or MSc. So that way I got the Nanda Gold Medal for uh, my first rank in second BSc while Mahananda himself got Nanda Gold Medal for first rank in first MSc. That was my first uh, award. I cherish it but uh, looking back, the circumstances under which the medal was given to me uh, appears funny. More about the MSc program now. Technically, there were seven seats for uh, MSc available to my batchmates, but in practice, there were only five seats. BYL Nile Hospital at Bombay uh, were conducting BSc program, but they did not have their uh, MSc program yet. I don't know whether it was a formal arrangement or, any, or an informal arrangement between the two institutions. From that year onwards, two seats in MSc at Aish Mysore were earmarked for students from BYL Nair Hospital. So in the year 1972, one Ms. Gita Pai and uh, Ms. Pushpa Swami from BYL Nair Hospital they joined us at Mysore for the first MSc program in 1972. That arrangement continued for three, four uh, years. Uh, I don't know what happened later. So from my batch of BSc, Sheila, I, Satyendran, Malik Arjun, and Shanwas got admission to first MSc. And three from the previous year's MSc badge, they also joined MSc with us. Ms. Maya Devi, Mr. Narahari Dattatraya and Mr. Nagendra Kumar were the three. Maya Devi and uh, Narahari Dattatraya, they had significant role in uh, the development of my professional career, but more about that later. With Maya Devi in the class, the remaining nine of us were always fighting for the second rank, second position. First rank and first position in every paper was a foregone conclusion for Miss Maya Devi. She was such a hard worker. In the first year, MSc, we had uh, uh, research methods and statistics, we had uh, ENT, and uh, we had neurology. Teaching of Neurology by Professor K.M. Jadav or K.D. Jadav uh, from Mysore Medical College was very enlightening. Other than this, our uh, first year MSc program was unremarkable and we went into second year MSc in 1973. The subjects that we had to study in final MSc were a bit surprising. We had a paper on neurological disorders, aphasia, cerebral palsy, and mental retardation. We had a paper on speech and hearing communication and experimental context. We had a paper on counseling and psychotherapy. Uh, we had a paper on uh, either linguistics or electronics and acoustics as an elective. There was dissertation, practical work, internal assessment, etc. The surprising thing was there was no paper in audiology. Dr. Atna taught us neurological disorders, aphasia, etc. He taught us speech and hearing communication, experimental phonetics, etc. He was the de facto guide for most of us in our uh, dissertation work. 
remember he was also teaching students of uh, other batches and he had uh, his administrative work we wonder the amount of work that dr ratna could do and his breadth of experience is amazing hats off to you sir i selected a topic on the development of a variable frequency artificial larynx to be used by laryngectomies the idea was to develop a electronic device on which the variations that we find in frequency and intensity in normal speech could be achieved so that the output speech from the artificial larynx would be more intelligible i took up the work under the guidance of uh, mr s s murthy we found a cubical device to house the electronic circuitry we developed a heartless oscillator which was the easiest thing to do i selected uh, the vibrating diaphragm of a non functional artificial larynx that was there in the department as the vibrating device and uh, the whole thing was embedded in a cubical uh, uh, structure we provided uh, three switches one on and off switch second one to be operated by the four finger to achieve variations in frequency and the third one to be operated by little finger uh, to be <coughs> used for varying intensity the prototype was ready i did some behavioral experiments and uh, reported the results in the form of uh, my ms3 dissertation looking back i think i was naive to assume that the complex and transient variations in frequency and intensity found in normal speech could be achieved manually on a simple electronic device the device drew applause from dr vijay shah an audiologist but who was also in the process of developing a similar device at bhai and nayar hospital he gave up the effort after knowing the aish mice of study i did not publish the results of the dissertation then they were published only 9 years later in 1983 in the journal of all india institute of speech and hearing the exams came and it is here that my friend and classmate narahi tatarya was a great help to me we were doing joint study for the exam joint study simply meant that narahi would come to my home read aloud for me or lecture whatever he had read at home and i and i would sit or lie down and just listen to him we were appear for the exam together i did very well got 65% and uh, second rank as expected miss maya devi got the first rank it's unfortunate that uh, narahi dadatraya left the field after his msc to serve in banking industry i always wanted to do phd after my msc but the question was where will i do aish was ruled out because aish was not giving any fellowship it's here that my friend ms maya devi told me about the indian institute of science at bangalore and professor ramakrishna professor ramakrishna was an expert in electrical communication engineering and architectural acoustics he had worked extensively in the areas of speech communication and intelligibility of speech with professor charles speaks at university of minnesota us I wrote to Professor uh, B. S. Ramakrishna, requesting him to consider my candidature for uh, PhD under his mentorship. Professor Ramakrishna responded promptly and told me about a problem in admission. I had to take an entrance examination at IAC at the level of Master of Science in Physics, Chemistry, and Mathematics. that's ruled out eventually professor ramakrishna managed 
to conduct a separate entrance examination for me in four subjects clinical psychology, linguistics, speech pathology, and audiology. This was followed by a personal interview some days later, and eventually I was selected for a PhD. IAC was giving a fellowship of rupees 250 per month those days. I joined Indian Institute of Science on 21st August 1974, and subsequently in September, I got Junior Research Fellowship of uh, the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, New Delhi. Again, a first for a speech and hearing graduate. Professor Ramakrishna wanted me to work in the area of speech intelligibility, probably as applicable in architectural acoustics, but the problem was it needed uh, an intense knowledge of mathematics and uh, I was very poor in mathematics. After much discussion, I decided to work in the area of linguistics and stuttering because expertise in linguistics was available at the Department of Foreign Languages at IASC. There was Dr. P. C. Ganesh Sundaram, a professor of linguistics. I selected the topic of linguistic analysis of stuttering patterns in bilingual and monolingual stutterers. I was virtually on my own in my PhD work and uh, it is here that the publications of Dr. Soderberg, Dr. Uh, Oliver Bloodstein and uh, Dr. Martin Wingate greatly guided me. I submitted my thesis in 1979 and was awarded the PhD degree in early 1980s. It's the first time a speech and hearing PhD was awarded to an Indian by an Indian institution. Subsequently, I submitted four manuscripts for publication in the Journal of Speech and Hearing Research. The editorial process went on for uh, nearly two years. Those days, the pattern was each manuscript would be reviewed by three reviewers, one associate editor and finally by the editor himself. The comments and reviews of the reviewing team was a great, great learning experience for me. Eventually, only one paper was accepted for publication in Journal of Speech and Hearing Research, which came in 1984. Again, a first for an Indian from India. In between, another publication of mine on phonetic influences in uh, stuttering uh, was published in the Journal of Communication Disorders in 1983, again a first for an Indian. After my PhD, I was working in a Government of India project on computer translation of Indian languages. English to Hindi and Hindi to Kannada. I worked as project officer for two and a half years and in 1983, I left Indian Institute of Science with a heavy heart. The decision and the gesture by Professor Ramakrishna back in 1974 completely changed my life for the better. I left IAC with a heavy heart, with the feeling that I failed to benefit from the expertise of Professor B. S. Ramakrishna because I could not work in the areas of his specialization. I left IAC in 1983 July, as I told earlier, and uh, I was selected as a lecturer in language and language disorders at All India Institute of Speech and Hearing, Mysore. And I joined Aish Mysore as a lecturer in October 1983. Thanks to my PhD work in the area of stuttering, I had good amount of information and understanding in the area of stuttering. But here at Aish, I had to 
teach apart from stuttering on aphasia cerebral palsy mental retardation voice and articulation there was no other go for me i had to sit and read my stay at mysore as a lecturer was a period of learning then when i got an opportunity in uh, april 1986 i left aish mysore and joined vimans as an assistant professor I was selected as an assistant professor in the third interview. In the first two interviews, when I had done exceedingly well, I was not selected. In the third interview, despite my poor performance, I was selected. I don't know what made Dr. G. N. Narayan Reddy, the then director of NIMHANS and chairman of the selection committee, to select me. Dr. Reddy was. a man of vision and a mentor for uh, most of us he ensured that each one of us was encouraged to give our best and to realize our potential i greatly benefited from the vision expertise and broad mindedness of professor narayan reddy subsequently with the implementation of fourth central pay commission recommendations i was promoted as associate pro professor on the date of my joining that is april 1986 in 1989 i was selected for the commonwealth medical award in audiology again first one from this which nearing field my placement was at aden brooks hospital in cambridge united kingdom there i came into contact with star words like Professor David Moffat, Professor Roger Gray, and Professor David Bagley. Professor David Moffat and Professor Gray had equal competence in audiology as they had in otolaryngology. It was a great experience to work with such star buds. Dr. Moffat trained me on electrocochleography. We were doing transtympanic uh, electrocochleography those days. Professor Roger Gray trained me on cochlear implant. First from India to be trained in cochlear implants. They were implanting single channel inneroid implants. I remember. Cochlear implant program was being implemented for the first time at Adel Brooks Hospital. that year in 1989 and professor roger gray was achieving excellent results even with single channel implants as part of my fellowship i worked and developed a speech and noise test which helped in the dif differential diagnosis between cochlear retrocochlear hearing loss and auditory dyssynchronia the results of the study were published later in 1992 in the journal of laryngology and otology i returned to india in may 1990 and continued with the clinical and research work at nimhans research work was mainly in the form of phd work in 1993 we experimented with the idea of mfil in speech and hearing the program didn't take off at all because there were no candidates and subsequently this mfil fellowship was converted into a phd fellowship at the department in the year 1993 i got a project from the department of uh, electronics and information technology government of india for indigenous development of technology for auditory brain stem potentials and uh, electrodes the collaborating institution was the center for electronics design technology at indian institute of science bangalore professor jodha rao professor kumar and professor jamadagni were the uh, other investigators in the project we worked on that developed a prototype and we could achieve 10 to the power 7 
amplification without the signal being distorted and without the circuit getting heated. The prototype was ready and uh, a project report was submitted to the Department of Electronics. We were also in the process of negotiating with uh, private entrepreneurs for production of uh, this equipment when the ministry told us uh, not to proceed further. They said they will get the report evaluated by a team of experts and then advise us on the future course of action and that advice never came. Then a major development happened in April 2000 which had great significance for Aish Mysore and my professional career. For various administrative reasons, the Ministry of Health, Government of India had to appoint a director for All India Institute of Speech and Hearing Mysore in April. But there was no time for them to follow the regular process. Therefore, they requested Professor Gauri Devi, the then director of NIMHANS, to function as director of Aish Mysore also. Under the arrangement, Dr. Gauri Devi was to work for two days at Mysore as director Aish and the remaining time at NIMHANS as director NIMHANS. Professor Gauri Devi thought about that and said, there's no need for me to go to Mysore as director Aish. There are experts in the speech meaning field itself. Gauri Devi was magnanimous in her approach. She had shown the same magnanimity while creating the Department of Speech Pathology and Audiology at Nimans back in 1980 and while an HOD was being nominated to this fledgling department. Later, Professor Gauri Devi recommended my name to the ministry. Mr. P.T. Shanugam, the then Health Minister, gave his approval for my appointment on 19th April. I received a phone call from the ministry which asked me to go to Mysore and assume the charge of Director Aish even if it is midnight that day. But I went the next day on 20th April and assumed charge as director of the institute in which position I stayed till 19th July 2006. I will characterize this period as a period of development in Aish history, no aspersions caused on anybody. In my very second meeting of the Executive Council of the Institute, Dr. C.P. Thakur, the then Union Health Minister, gave approval for deemed to be university status for the Institute, but that was only the first stage in the entire process. Later, a proposal had to go from the Ministry to the Ministry of Human Resources, who will in turn refer it to UGC. UGC will do all the processing and inspection, send its recommendations to the Ministry of Human Resource Development, who will give approval or no approval then uh, to be documented by UGC later. I had approval from the ministry, but you know, we didn't have the infrastructure required by UGC to be granted and deemed to be university status. And therefore we started the developmental work. There was development in all spheres of uh, activities of the Institute, clinical services, training programs, research and other domains. But let me briefly touch upon the development scene in the domain of clinical services. The institute programs for the management of persons who are identified with the hearing loss.
Later came an invitation from Sri Devaraja Ras Academy of Education in Present. Most of the times they are not understanding that too unreasonable in their demands, don't recognize our status and capability.